So, hi to everybody out there. Once again, my name is Stefan Komonik. I'm managing partner at HACOM. And I'm here together with our experts, Ricardo Wickert. Hi, Ricardo. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. And Thomas Mühlbacher. Hi, Thomas. Hi, good afternoon. Um, we want to welcome you to our third webinar of a series that deals with the disruptive changes that we are facing right now in the energy consumption those days. Um, whereas our first webinar was about analyzing the changes, uh, and the last one uh, was all of um, uh, was about how to model those effects in forecasting. And today it's all about visualizing. Visualizing, and uh, we want uh, to take you on a visual journey through energy data during this exceptional springtime. Um, right at the start, uh, there are some important facts. Thanks, Ricardo. Uh, during the webinar, please take part and use our Q&A function. It should be at the bottom of your screen as displayed on the slide, but it could also be uh, at the top. Uh, please check for that. Um, once again, uh, I'd like to remind uh, you to use the chat function on our homepage for any further questions or comments that you may have after the webinar. Uh, then uh, I will also refer to our newsletter. Uh, please sign up for it. Uh, I promise there will be no spam. We will really focus on valuable content um, all around time series. Uh, this webinar will also be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. And the link uh, will come uh, with a follow-up email to all of you. Since 30 years, we at HACOM work for the energy market, and our focus is and has always been on time series. Uh, we regard them as the elementary particles of the energy industry. And with more than 100 companies in over 15 countries already using our time series technology, it is our mission to make energy data valuable. So why did we choose this topic today? Uh, we live in a time in which we are confronted with the unknown and new, and we have learned that anytime there's some exceptional challenges, the visualization of data can reveal insights that remain hidden to pure statistical analysis. Uh, therefore, we want to dedicate the next 25 minutes uh, to the potential offered by an outstanding tool set for visual computing. Uh, but how comes that a visual tool set can help us in such a situation? Uh, ten years ago, uh, we met the experts from VRWIS, which is a top research center for visual computing here in Vienna. And they explained to me that it's no coincidence that people say, I see in English, when they actually mean, I understand. Visual analytics somehow directly appeal to our natural abilities to comprehend things. And during those 10 years, they have developed an amazing set of visual dashboards that we have been using for understanding better how we can improve our forecasting models and how to choose between different modeling approaches. But at the same time, those dashboards helped the TSO at fraud detection or showed us that PV panels were not generating power forecast uh, because they, they uh, were snowed in or iced up due to weather conditions. Uh, and it was amazing how fast you could see those effects uh, in those dashboards. Uh, the list of possible use cases is sheer endless. Uh, but today, Thomas Mühlbacher, one of the top researchers of VRWIS, will show how he could find interesting facts about the power consumption of several countries during this crazy springtime. Uh, Thomas is now responsible for customer success at Wiesbler GmbH, which is a spin-off of VRWIS. And once again, Thomas, thanks for joining us today. Uh, before Thomas takes over, uh, Ricardo Wickert, our uh, uh, head of R&D, will briefly guide us through what uh, we have seen so far and will later comment on Thomas' findings. Uh, by the way, if you want to know more about Ricardo, please check out his bio uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, right after the two have finished, uh, we will have a short panel here where I will forward your questions to them. So please do not forget to ask your questions. Remember the Q&A functions. So with that said, Ricardo, uh, please start with your overview. So thank you, Stefan. And also from me, thanks to everybody who's joining us today. Previously on our first webinar, we observed how consumption figures have been changing over the last several weeks due to the various lockdown measures. For those of you who did not take part, uh, a link is provided on the chat window and also on our YouTube channel. So there we analyzed the electricity and gas loads over April and May, computing a difference against a long time average uh, examining how it affected weekends and weekday profile shapes, and also how these differences have evolved over time. In our second webinar, we tackled different approaches to modeling those changes in the context of a day ahead forecast. We saw how a differences model or a dummy variable can already provide significant improvement. We observed that in certain cases, reducing the amount of historical data so that the more recent events have a larger weight when training the models resulted in better performance. 
And finally, we looked at how different scenarios could pan out if we went back to a lockdown scenario or if we allow the strength of this lockdown variable to vary. And today we'll revisit some of these topics, but from a visual perspective. So back to you, Stefan. Thanks, Ricardo, for this uh, short wrap up. Um, and I will now ask uh, Thomas directly to start his live show. Thomas, it is all systems go for Wisplot. Thanks a lot, Stefan. I'm sharing my screen now. So hi, everybody. I'm Thomas Mühlbacher. I will be your guide through this visual journey. I was a key developer of the software tool TSM Visuals that you're about to see. And nowadays, I work a lot with customers and users of the software. So let's start here with a data set in the time series manager. You may already know this data set from the previous webinars. It is uh, the power consumption of five countries in Europe and also some temperature time series here. And from here, it is just one more click to open the TSM visuals and start analyzing this data. So TSM visuals, these are predefined cockpits that are ready to use for your tasks like correlation analysis and many others. In this case, I start with structure analysis, which is a good first cockpit to take a first look at your data and you get new data, for example. And here we are. All right. And once we're here, we can immediately browse through our time series here, for example, take a look at them. So it's really easy to get with one click from the data in your time series manager into these visuals to take to start your visual journey here. Now, I want to show you some findings on this data set. And for this, I have prepared a session in advance, which pretty much started the same point here. So we're looking at the power consumption of Austria here from this year. And what, of course, we all know is that uh, this lockdown uh, started in the beginning, in the, in the middle of March, actually. So zooming in here a bit to this lockdown, we immediately see that, well, once these measures were in place, the power consumption here dropped and also stayed down. So was this the same in all of the countries? Let's add Germany to the discussion. Now, as we add Germany here, the time series are automatically normalized such that their maximum values align even though Germany has a generally much higher power consumption. And we compared the shape now. So what we see is before this lockdown, they were quite similar in the line here. But once the lockdown was in place, Austria in blue dropped much faster and more early than Germany, which only dropped later. Okay, so this was one difference here. What about other countries? Spain, for example. Ah, here we see something interesting. This is something that you commonly encounter when you work with real data is data quality problems. So here you see, for example, that the consumption dropped down to zero, which was not plausible in that period here. But fortunately, we can do something about this. Visuals is very flexible in working with unclean data because you can just select this like in a drawing program and then start editing this data. For example, forming a substitute value by linear interpolation from the neighbors can be done with one click. So this is something that the data scientists working with this usually love. Um, and what we see here is that, well, yeah, Spain declines as well, but towards the summer, it seems to increase a bit again. Okay, that's interesting, the power consumption. Also for Italy, it looks similar, dropping and then increasing again towards the summer. And for UK, well, okay, we have a few outliers again that we clean up. But then aside from this, we see that UK dropped a bit slower. And so it didn't drop so much like the others and stayed more constantly here. So now that we have cleaned up our data, we can compare all five countries. And we want to look at the trends. So first we normalize it differently, go to set standardization, which means it aligns them by their mean. So their mean values uh, are aligned now. <clears throat> and then we can just show moving averages to look at the trends. Make this visualization a bit bigger. <coughs> Sorry. Then we see, for example, that uh, UK, which is shown in bright green here, stayed up the longest. So it took the longest in UK to drop the consumption, while um, Spain and Italy were the first to go down. And also we see very clearly here with these monthly trends that Italy and Spain clearly go up towards the summer again. So these are some findings that you can get out here very quickly. One other thing that visuals is very good at 
is um, comparing multiple time periods. Because the obvious question here that we can ask is, well, what changed before the lockdown period to after the lockdown period? What aspects of the consumption did change? And this is a thing that you can do very easily here. You can, for example, select the period you want to compare to the rest, like in a drawing program, and then define a classification on your data from that. In this case, I prepared something like that in advance. And we can use this classification here, for example, to color this plot. Okay, so we see before lockdown in green, after lockdown in blue. But you can use this classification in all other things here as well. So for example, let's break down the statistics to these periods and compare the period statistically. So for example, here, we can see that uh, the, the mean value of the consumption before the lockdown was higher in all of the countries than afterwards. But of course, now you can ask, well, what are we comparing here? We are comparing a period, which is winter months, basically, to a period that contains summer months. And there are some seasonal effects at play here. So this is maybe not the fairest comparison. But what you would actually like to do is compare this blue lockdown period here to the same times from the previous years. And this is something that we can do because actually, um, we have uh, the data set actually has more years than just 2020. We just have used the filter here. So I can remove this filter. And then we see that the data set is actually much longer. It starts in 2017. So we have actually all these months that we want to compare from three reference years before. And here again, I prepared some, um, some, some classification to just have these periods for the comparison. And we can put that in the filter now. So you see that we really have March to June from all of these four years to compare. <clears throat> all right. And now we can do uh, some, some things like comparing these power consumptions more directly. So for example, let's go just filter for the power consumptions here. And uh, we see that these countries all have quite different uh, amounts of power consumption. So if you want to know which one dropped the most, we want to make this a relative comparison. And we can do this very easily here to say we want to see it in percent and define the period before the lockdown as our reference. Meaning that this green period is the reference now and this blue period from this year is compared to it. And so we can rank and order the, the countries by the amount of change. And we see, for example, that Italy dropped the most. Okay, so Italy has dropped by 17% of the power consumption compared to these same uh, periods from the last three years. Followed by Spain, which also dropped uh, significantly. Austria and Germany, not so much. But what's going on with UK here? This stands out. UK seems to have increased. Ah, and looking at UK reveals that we have, well, another data quality problem because in 2018, actually no consumption was recorded. It was zero here. And that is why it shows that the, the consumption has gone up compared to that. So again, what we can do is we can simply select this and filter these values out. And by doing this, we see, yes, UK also dropped, but it was actually somewhere in the middle between the other countries. So that was something that you can really do here quite easily. Now let's take a look at daily profiles because um, let's see here, so. that's another aspect uh, that might have changed from before the lockdown to afterwards. And this is very easy to do. So let's uh, take a look at Italy, for example. What does this visualization show? It shows daily profiles from, uh, from midnight on the left, going through mornings, noon, evening to midnight again. And uh, the two rows here show the profile for, well, the top row is this year and the bottom row is the reference years before. And the colors now show how the peaks um, are distributed during, during the day. So red means this is a peak for that particular day in the daily uh, pattern. And you would see here, for example, that Italy had a specifically pronounced evening peak during the lockdown period of this year. Okay, so nine, uh, 7 and 8 p.m. were the strongest consumption in Italy this year, which was not the case in the previous years before this lockdown. Also, we see that the consumption seems to have started later in the day um, this year than the previous years. <clears throat> uh, in Spain, we also see that it has started later in the day. So people maybe 
started using consumption um, yeah, later. But here we see a uh, specifically pronounced peak at 1 p.m. So this is also something interesting that maybe some lunch behavior or whatever changed this year. That the peak of Spain was at 1 p.m. The daily profile. UK also has an evening peak. So we see 6 and 7 p.m. is the peak of the, of the daily profile of the consumption after the lockdown here. And uh, well, one can only hypothesize what the reasons are, but in UK, as we know, the pubs were closed. So people maybe used a lot of energy all in their homes, which in, in total was more energy consumption. Could be one hypothesis here. And also they started using it later in the day. Austria was not so different actually from the previous years. Also that, well, yes, people uh, used energy a bit longer in the evenings, as it seems here. And in Germany, we see there was a specifically pronounced lunch peak or lunchtime peak, let's say. 11 and 12, this was by far the strongest period, but the overall pattern looks quite similar. Now we can ask ourselves, ourselves um, maybe the temperature or other things were just different this year. And that is why this, uh, the, the consumption profiles and everything has changed. So we can include the temperature in our analysis here because we have these time series. And also take a look if there was significantly different temperatures this year than from the previous years. And looking at this here, we see that, well, in these countries, the temperature was not so different this year than the previous year. But in Austria, well, in Austria, actually, we can add this here. We see that there was a bit more significant uh, temperature change. So these months in this year were actually colder than the previous years. But we can look at the direct uh, correlation between the temperature and the power consumption. Flip the axis. So. so what we see here is now for Austria, the correlation between the temperature on X axis and the power consumption on the Y axis. And the, the years, the, the reference years before are green and this year is blue. So we see that the overall shape of the relationship is quite similar. So the, the, the shape of the curve here. But we see that um, for the same temperatures, like let's look at five degrees Celsius here, the power consumption was significantly lower this year than the years before. So even though the overall temperature might have been lower this year, we see that for the same temperature, and the same temperature was observed, the consumption was significantly lower for all the temperatures that have been observed. So the temperature alone was not the, the only uh, factor, of course, explaining the difference in the consumption. So let me briefly summarize what we've seen here before I show you one last thing. Um, we've seen that with TSM visuals, you can very quickly get an overview of your time series data. You can compare periods, trends, and correlations just out of the box. And even dirty data is no problem as you can easily clean it on the fly. And there is much more that you can do. For example, analyzing correlations in depth, searching for patterns and anomalies, or validating and comparing forecast modes, which is very common in the energy industry. And that is actually something, or the last thing that I want to show you is a use case of, uh, from, from comparing um, deviations from forecast, for example. And here we are comparing again 2020, so this year in black, the consumption of Austria here, to the long-term trend from the last three years. So we averaged the data from the last three years so we can compare for every day what the consumption would have been on average in the last years versus this year. And then immediately you see here again around this lockdown period, how it uh, started dropping and how the deviations stayed up here for Austria. You can also look at some error metrics here, which also is really useful for, for your forecasts when you forecast energy and, and, and uh, prices, etc. But what's also interesting is again, an overview visualization for all the countries. So here we have, uh, we did the same for all the countries comparing this year to the average of the last three years. And we see when it started the, the deviation to become big. So you have days here from 1st of January left until July in the end. And you see here again that for these countries, Spain, Italy, and Austria, the deviations started around 15th of March. You also see that for Spain, it went, uh, Actually, the deviations became really big for Austria. Yes, also big, but not as big. And then there's these other countries like Germany and UK, which started later to deviate from what was expected from the consumption. 
And we also see, for example, that UK overall has not so much of a deviation. So it was more likely expected than the, previous, than the other countries, maybe because the lockdown measures only took, uh, came into uh, place later and not as tough maybe. Yeah. So to wrap up, I would say this is a quite nice extension to the TSM for um, making use of all the collected data and everybody, even people without a dedicated data science background can get deep insights from their data within minutes. And with that, I would like to hand back to Stefan. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm always fascinated by this smooth way that those dashboards give you insight and how fast you can see even the most complex interrelations. But there's thing, still one more thing. Uh, may I pass over to Ricardo? Because I know that you have prepared some interesting use cases for forecasting modeling. Ricardo? Absolutely. So we can also use the visual toolkits like Thomas just showed us to evaluate the different models that we had constructed. So we could take the models that we built on the previous webinar and bring them into visuals. And here we can compare the three flavors of models that we had developed. So we'll have here on the top uh, a normal multivariate regression. In the middle, that model taking uh, the previous result and subtracting the differences from the three-year average for the same day. And at the bottom, using a dummy variable to signalize the social restriction measures that we introduced to limit the spread of the virus. And in the graph, we have January to the end of June on the horizontal axis. And we see all the models here, models uh, for Austria, take a hit on the 15th of March when the measures are put in place. But the differences model improves significantly already a few weeks afterwards. And the model with the dummy variable reverts to its usual performance levels once about one week of data with the new condition has been gathered, as this is needed to allow the model to properly attribute the differences in consumption to this variable. In the previous webinar, we had also discussed that we could employ less historical data so that the models would be more heavily weighted towards more recent events. And here we do the same. We compare the initial model at the top with the regression model calibrated only on a rolling 45 days training set. And we see that after an initial period, this reduced training set model uh, leads to a substantial improvement as the model more quickly grasps what has changed in the consumption behavior. Another interesting view that we can use uh, visuals for is to compare which model was more often right. Say if we have different models that we constructed, we want to see when to use each one of them. And here we could say initially, it seems there's nothing new. The model with the dummy variable performs the best most of the time with the differences model second and the original model last. So we have them in blue, red, and orange. However, we can introduce another variable. For instance, we had in the models a holiday calendar. And we see now that the proportion is already a bit different, uh, how many days each model was more often correct. And if we highlight only the holidays, then we see that there's an inter interesting effect on holidays, the model using the dummy variable is overcorrecting the forecast, meaning it's forecasting too low, meaning likely the load reduction for the holiday is being applied together with the load reduction for the coronavirus period. This suggests that we could improve the modeling process and introduce an additional interaction between those variables so that the, the reduction is taken in account differently for holidays and non-holidays. And this is a step that becomes really apparent from this visual analysis. And another use case could be if we built two models based on the same data, but using different methodologies. Say here we compare two models trained, uh, one using the multivariate regression we had employed before in blue, but one using a neural network uh, in orange. And these two models have very similar overall performance, but the neural network performs better during weekdays while the regression is more often accurate on the weekends. So we see the distribution um, on the top left from Monday to Sunday. And we see this could provide important information to assist in selecting which model to employ and when to employ them. So with this, we've seen that the visual component helps us not only understand what is going on, but also provides a lot of input on how we can improve things going forward, also from this forecasting perspective. So with this, back to you, Stefan. Thanks, great, uh, Ricardo. Um, uh, I see that uh, there are some questions coming in. Uh, 
please continue asking. We will soon start our Q&A session. I think we saw that it's a real help for everyone uh, out there who is doing forecast modeling. Um, but before we come to the Q&A sessions, uh, I would like to talk quickly about the special offer uh, that we have for you. Um, today, we would like you to join us for a half day workshop at a very reasonable price, as you can see. Join us on a visual journey through your own data and gain insight into correlations between time series that are important to you in your daily business. Uh, we are sure that we uh, will also make amazing discoveries in your own data. And if you get the taste, uh, you can test the tool set afterwards at a very uh, attractive conditions. And if you're interested, please write a short message to sales at hacom.at or use the chat function and we will contact you uh, later on for the details. Um, so uh, now for our Q&A session, let me look. Um, um, we have an interesting question here. Uh, of, um, let's see, I have to sort them out a bit. Um, maybe the first one uh, goes out to Thomas. How long uh, does it take to work uh, uh, with the tool set so that you can do it the way you do it? I think that refers to the, the training that you need to, to handle all this that fast. Yeah. Uh... I would say this is uh, something that is uh, really uh, easy to get into because of the in intuitive visual approach that we have here. Also, there is some, um, some very nice uh, onboarding materials, like for example, video tutorials that make it quite straightforward to, to get used to this. And sometimes uh, it's also, uh, yeah, for, for all the extended functionality that I have not shown, it's possible to have a small workshop. And usually after one workshop, people are able to uh, handle the tool quite well on their own. Okay, thank you. Um, another one, um, uh, kind of a more stimulating question. Uh, actually, I think that's interesting, um, addresses both of you. Without, uh, with all the artificial intelligence out there, do you think that visual computing is really necessary anymore? Uh, maybe Ricardo for you, do you want to start with that one? That's, that's a very good one. I think what, uh, what Thomas highlighted uh, shows that it's actually a complementary approach. There's a lot of things that uh, are very apparent to the eye. The eye is trained to identify anomalies, but these anomalies have to first be programmed so that a machine learning algorithm can even begin to understand it. So I don't think it really excludes uh, the need for visual computing. It's really a complementary approach to help you guide what sort of data you have to feed for your machine learning model. Maybe Thomas has a different uh, or can comment further. No, I, I fully agree that this is complementary. And I think whenever you have understood and formulated the problem well enough uh, to use AI, then use the AI. But so often in practice, as you've also seen before in the demo, then when you have outliers and so on, which a human immediately recognizes as unplausible as outliers, then uh, you need the, the expert knowledge uh, to, to add something that the AI will work in the end. So it's the human who, who chooses the problems for the AI, who formulates them. And so often you can, as Ricardo said, make use of the intuition and domain knowledge just to, to recognize what's going on and um, yes, complement all the things that you can do with an AI later once you have standardized or understood the problem well enough to standardize it. Good, got the message, thanks. Thanks, Thomas. It's another one um, for um, addresses the uh, forecasting modeling. Um, how uh, would you handle the corona time after the pandemic in the training of a model? Would you just don't use this time for training or keep the dummy or any other ideas? Ricardo, maybe for you? I think if we're dealing with a customer that say for the typical uh, sales forecast where you get one year worth of load and you have to estimate the three year contract for this customer. Um, if you only have one year worth of data, then absolutely you have to use it. And then maybe you need some sort of data processing to rescale it to what you believe would be the normal consumption in this class of customer. Of course, if you have two or more years from the customer, in uh, also taking account the period before, then you would need some sort of dummy variable to differentiate between the two. Um, I think it depends really a lot from, from which sector the customer comes from because some customers, some segments will likely never get back to the normal as we knew it before, while others we've seen the, the load is already back up to where it was. So you definitely need more information in the models more specific and depending on how much data is available in the history. Exactly. Uh, thanks, Ricardo. But we'll um, allow for one last one. Um, I think this one would 
go to Thomas. Um, is it possible to integrate my own calculations, uh, maybe like Python or MATLAB, Thomas? Mm, yes, so there is multiple options to do so. Um, you can directly, for example, compute new time series or, or new conditions using Python directly in the software. Um, so there's a formula editor for this. Uh, alternatively, you can also integrate uh, visuals with uh, workspace languages, like when you have your Python, your notebooks, for example, your R or your MATLAB workspace, this integrates directly. So you can directly transfer, for example, your data frames over and analyze all of that data right away. So these can be used as different data sources and work side by side. So you can do the perfect integration between computation and visualization. Thanks. So for data scientists, much on yes, board as well. For example, Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, there is still some questions, but with back to the time, I'm awful sorry we can't go into them today, but we will, uh, again, like the last time, directly uh, answer it to you and, and do it by uh, individual follow-up emails. Uh, thanks, anyway. Uh, so now at the very end, I would like to mention the next webinar series that we plan for the autumn, starting uh, with September. Uh, the guiding principle will be our motto, life is a time series. And the first one of this series will be about the areas uh, in which time series influence our daily lives. And I can promise you already now that we will show surprising use cases and we will again invite some real persons of interest. So please uh, again, join us. Uh, anyway, please stay tuned to us. Have a nice summer and do not forget, life is a time series. Bye. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye, thank you. Bye.